Hello and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us. You know, Brian, some of our friends and neighbors have said, you guys just take this soil sampling to the extreme. Well, we've never taken it more extreme than we have this year. We've sampled every single inch going down a foot deep in no-till, conventional till, and strip till. Not in and, yeah, not in every field. No, 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 no. <laughs> it was a little too expensive for that. But, but we did do it in a few fields and, and different tillage methods so we can show you what's going on with fertilizer stratification, with organic matter buildup, all these things in our soils. Well, it is really important to know what's going on in soils. And it's also important to know what's happening in your crop once it's being raised. Well, with soybeans, for example, we've had this disease show up in the Midwest the last few years called sudden death syndrome. It may be one of the worst diseases you could get. It's dramatically impacted yields all over. We want to discuss today what you need to do to take steps on your farm to prevent this from robbing your yield in 2013. Well, we've got a weed of the week that's a lot closer to home than Brian was aware of. We'll share that later in the show, but first, here's this week's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we wanted to discuss the crop acres that we have in the United States. And I'll tell you the reason why we're discussing this, because there have been a lot of people over the last couple of years saying that we as farmers are farming all kinds of new acres and we're destroying the land, Darren. I think that's ridiculous. <laughs> well, I, I'm not laughing because that's not a serious accusation. I'm laughing because it's not even close to the fact. And when you look at the historical crop acres that have been farmed over the years, it really tells the true story. Now, what we'll give you for acreage here is crop land used for crops in the United States. Take 1980, for example, we had 382 million acres in production. And in 2010, just 30 years later, we only had 335 million acres in production. That's a dramatic reduction in acres farm, Darren. We're not farming more acres, we're farming less. Yet our crops are getting bigger and bigger. And actually the total volume of like corn, for example, has never been higher other than this year is a little bit tough with the drought. But the way that our crop yields have gone, we're raising so much more per acre, we can farm less acres and still have more food. So I have no idea where people are getting their information. They basically just listen, in my opinion, to other uninformed people. And pretty soon this all starts spreading through our society that we as farmers are tearing up all this new ground. But here are a couple things that you need to know. First of all, yes, we are farming fewer acres. Secondly, there is the Conservation Reserve Program, or CRP for short, that still has close to 30 million acres in it, and those acres used to be farm ground. So we definitely have acres out there that we used to farm. We even know where a lot of those acres are, and a lot of those acres are going to continue to not be farmed. So I don't know if we're ever, Darren, going to get back to the level we were at in, say, 1980 or 1982 or anything like that. we got a long ways to go. Well, I don't think we are, Brian, because you look at urban sprawl and you look at how many acres are getting chewed up every year with pavement now. There's roads yeah. on them. There's houses on them. And I, I look just around where we grew up and see how many acreages now are built out in the country and how far the cities have moved out into the country, basically eating up really good farmland in a lot of cases that now just has houses on it and can never be farmed again. Well, once again, we just wanted to make sure you had the facts when you're talking to anyone who says that farmers are farming more acres today than they were quite a few years ago. It's just absolutely not true. Fortunately though, farmers are doing a good enough job that they continue to produce more crop even on fewer acres. Well, one other thing farmers are doing a good job on is weed control. Can you identify this week's weed? Back in 1966, Advanced Drainage Systems, Inc. was the first company to start manufacturing plastic agricultural drainage pipe in the United States. And today, ADS continues our leadership with superior pipe production and service capabilities. Our roots are firmly entrenched in the agriculture industry, and we're committed to helping farmers grow their business. With 54 manufacturing plants and 24 distribution yards throughout the world, you can count on ADS and our green-striped pipe to be there when you need us. Advanced Drainage Systems, the green-striped pipe you can count on. 
In the world of four-wheel drive tractors, there is no name more powerful than Steiger. The newest addition to the powerful Case IH Steiger line is the Steiger Row Track, available at Titan Machinery. Designed for row crop use, the Row Track provides more maneuverability and reduces compaction while maintaining power and performance. It's available with 16, 18, or 24-inch tracks for row spacing as narrow as 20 inches. Visit your Titan Machinery dealer today to learn more about the Case IH Steiger Row Track. Titan Machinery, better solutions. Only the Liberty Link system combines the yield potential growers want with reliable weed control they need. The performance of the beans uh, I've been really satisfied with. Overall, the bean uh, had a 64 bushel average. Uh, the full season beans we grew averaged 70, so I was extremely satisfied with the performance of the bean, the quality of the bean. I think that we have to have the Liberty Link system to keep growing beans in the south. Uh, and probably in the whole nation or else the, the resistance issue is going to just uh, take many acres out of production. And that's one reason that I've incorporated the Liberty Link system into my farming program is where I don't end up with a resistance problem. They've uh, yielded right with conventional varieties, Roundup varieties. Uh, as far as yield and, and ease of use, I haven't had any problem at all. They worked out real good. Brought to you by the Liberty Lake Trait and Liberty Herbicide. Your link to higher yield starts with outstanding weed control. For years, FarmLogic has been the easiest and most convenient way to keep up with your farming operations. Well, it just got better. Introducing FarmPad for your phone. You always have your phone with you, so entering records as they happen is as easy as a touch of a button. Chemical database, GPS, service records, and more. When you do it on the farm, Save it on your phone and it's backed up forever. Call or visit farmlogic.com for a free trial and find out why FarmLogic is the best decision tool for the farm. One inch soil test. You know, if you just can't get enough doing a six inch core or a zero to 24 <laughs> inch sample, do every single inch all the way down. Now this one takes a little bit of time. When you think about it, if you want to send <laughs> well, in, should. you know, if you want to send in a quart or a couple of quarts of soil and you need to get that all from the three inch soil layer, well, you've got to clear a pretty good area <laughs> in a number of spots to take a few different cores and get that much soil. So it's a lot of work. It costs a little money, but if you do it one time ever on your farm, you'll learn a big lesson. Okay, and here's what that lesson is. Nutrient stratification. Now we've talked about this for years on Ag PhD, but we didn't have the actual data to show you how dramatic that stratification becomes. So what we did is, even on our own farm here, we took a couple of fields, one where we had been doing strip till for many years, one where we had been doing conventional till. And by the way, a lot of people ask us, well, what do you like better, strip till or conventional till? I just tell them, look, you can make about any tillage practice work as long as you manage it properly. So I'm not that worried about the tillage practice. Yes, there's some things I like about strip till. There are some things I like about conventional till. We can talk about that another day. But the main thing is, I just want you to understand, we pulled samples from each of these couple of fields, and then we also had a no-tiller who was just a few miles away from here and we pulled samples out of his field and let's talk about the results on each of these different fields. Well first of all let's look at the conventional till field and we'll show some of these results for you. We aren't going to talk specifically about the actual numbers but what I would say to focus on is this. With conventional till the top two or three inches of soil have a tremendous amount of fertility and then once you get below that we're short on almost everything. Okay. All our fertilizer is up in the All top right. few inches. Yep. And let's step this back a little bit. I want to go to the no-till first where almost all the nutrients, almost all the P and K is in the top two inches. Everything below that and almost nothing. With conventional till, it's in the top maybe three inches and it goes down a little less dramatically than what it does in no-till. We've got higher levels of nutrients at the three inch level, the four inch level, the five inch level, the six inch level than we do in no-till. And this no-till has been in no-till for maybe 10 years. So yep. it's been in there for quite a while, not 30 or 40 years, but 10 years is a pretty good period of time. Okay, then we get to the strip-till ground and take a look at what happened here. We've got similar nutrient levels to the no-till in the top inch or two, and then it kind of drops off a little bit like it does in conventional till where it drops off at four inches, five inches. But when we've been putting this strip-till band down at seven to 10 inches deep, depending on the year and who's running the equipment, the organic matter levels are higher in that seven to 10 inch range than they are even in the three or four inch range in the strip till. Why is that? Well, when we have fertility, we're going to have a proliferation of roots in that zone. Now, some people think, well, roots are going to grow to the fertilizer. No, 
Roots are going to grow looking for food and looking for water in the soil, but when they find that fertilizer, they're really going to spread out and try and get all the food that they can get. So you'll see a big proliferation of roots right through that zone where we're leaving that strip till of fertilizer. It's the same thing that you see in conventional till and no-till. It looks like you've got a tremendous root system because in the top few inches, there's all kinds of roots up there. The problem is in the summer when it gets dry, those top few inches of soil are the first place that your soil profile dries out, and now we don't have any moisture there for those roots to be able to extract and nutrients. And that right there is the main reason why we did this whole project this last fall, because during this winter, we've been talking to farmers all over the country about how can I drought proof my crop? And everybody says, well, I have some moisture as I go a little deeper. Yep, you probably do have some moisture as you go a little deeper in the ground, but how many nutrients do you have down there? It's great to get water into the plant, but wouldn't it be nice to get food into that plant as well? If you can do that, you have now, you're never going to drought proof your crop, but you made it much more drought tolerant. All right, Brian, well, that's all nice to say, but now we've got a neighbor that's extremely concerned. He's liked his no-till. He likes not <laughs> doing the tillage. He likes what it's doing yep. to soil tilth in the top few inches of soil, especially. But now he's wondering, well, man, what do I do with my fertilizer? How do I get fertilizer down deep? Yeah, and you know, this is the number one reason why we moved away from no-till years ago. People talk about the ground warming up and everything else. And yes, I wanted to have the ground a little warmer, but what I was a lot more concerned about was this nutrient stratification thing. You have to find a way to get nutrients down deeper in the soil. So my suggestion is to do strip till and you don't even have to necessarily plant right over the strip if you want to. I mean you'll get the most bang for your buck that way but somehow deep inject nutrients. So whether it's with a strip till machine or just some other type of shank machine to deep inject fertilizer that's the way to go in my opinion. Well in a conventional till we kind of look at the same thing. If you're just running across your ground stirring up the top four or maybe six inches, usually what happens is broadcast fertilizer applications on top of the ground, a majority of that will move down half the depth of your tillage. So if you're digging in at say six inches deep and you say, man, I'm doing a great job managing my residue and getting that fertilizer covered up if I'm tilling at six inches, that's nice, but just keep in mind, most of your fertilizer, if not all of it, is in the top three inches of soil now. So you really haven't done anything to overcome this nutrient stratification. Yep. So that's why a lot of people are going to things like deep ripping and they're using parabolic shanks and they're spinning the ground. They're using plows again, and things you, like and that. And you don't to have get to do it every deeper. year. If you did it just once every few years, you could kind of stir things up and get, them, get it moving. You could, but here's one of the challenges with that. Let's say you only have eight inches of topsoil and now you're running down at 14 inches with some type of deep tillage and you're taking that subsoil and bringing it up to the top. Well, that is not necessarily good. You can build topsoil over time and you can make that subsoil good over time, but over time are the key words there. So when you start bringing up subsoil, I mean, almost immediately, you're gonna have a little bit lower yield and that's not necessarily good. Well, I like how you try and be kind here, Brian, and say, well, it's, it's not necessarily good. Well, not necessarily good means bad. And bad is not a good thing for your crop this year because you're trying to make money this year, but you're also trying to do things right for the long term. So if you want to build that subsoil up and try and make more topsoil and make topsoil deeper in your soil, what you need to do is do some deep injecting. Now we've done that just with commercial fertilizer applications. We've also done that with manure. And really deep injecting manure is probably the best thing I can think of for building that soil up for the long term. Yep, so in other words, we're fine if you want to stir your soil up, but if you have shallow topsoil, stirring the soil up from down deep where the subsoil is, that's not good. So you've got to pay attention to how much topsoil you have and if you want to really stir that ground up or not. And there are certainly other things that go into that in terms of fuel consumption and in terms of you're not going to have a base for your soil you can sink in if you have a wet spring. A lot of things for you to think about. But our whole point with this is we suggest that sometime on your farm take some one inch soil tests like we did and then you'll find out how you're doing in terms of nutrient stratification and I'd be willing to bet you if you're doing just minimum tillage or if you're doing no-till, you're gonna find most of your nutrients in the top one to two inches of your soil. Well, the problem, Brian, too, when your fertility is all in that top inch or two of soil, that's where all the weeds are germinating at. Weeds like our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? You expect a lot from this seed, and as it grows through each stage of development, Agroculture Liquid Fertilizers is there, feeding your crop exactly what it needs when it needs it. So no matter how you fertilize, no matter when, AgroLiquid efficiently brings all the nutrients your crop needs for a great harvest. 
from one kernel in the ground to 600 on the ear. For better yields and better quality, Agroculture Liquid Fertilizers. There are more mouths to feed than ever before. What are farmers doing to meet the challenge? They're using agronomically designed equipment from Case IH. Our Quattrec technology, soil management, and planting systems are designed to foster a better growing environment that helps farmers maximize yield potential. And our deep understanding of agriculture is preparing them for the challenges ahead. Will you be ready? I'm ready. Go to CaseIH.com to learn more. Today's number is three. You can see it everywhere, and it can stand for almost anything. But when it comes to protecting the nitrogen that feeds your crops, three is the special number that sets Nutrisphere N Nitrogen Fertilizer Manager apart because Nutrisphere N has proven to reduce all three forms of nitrogen loss, which adds up to keeping more nitrogen and yield where it belongs. So ask for Nutrisphere N, the stabilizer that fights nitrogen loss three ways. For lower cost, higher production, see your Mandaco Agri-Dealer. Ask about the best production-built land roller on the market. Mandaco, simple design for easy transport to easy use. 12 to 85 foot widths, heavy-duty 4x8 3 8 inch tube frame, and now available with a steerable wing wheel. Mandaco Land Rollers, improved soil to seed contact, faster, more uniform germination, less moisture loss, eliminate downtime due to rocks. See your Mandaco Agri-Dealer. Visit northcountrymarketing.biz or call. Looking to maximize yield? Quickroots is a microbial seed inoculant that allows the plant root to explore a greater volume of soil, the key to higher yields. Quickroots continues to generate yield response on corn, soybeans, wheat, and more. Quickroots is applied to the seeds so the live microorganisms go right to work, enhancing seedling vigor, increasing the uptake of certain nutrients, including NPK, and expanding root volume. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Call TJ Technologies or your local dealer and get your quick roots today. A couple of years ago in Iowa, soybean yields got hurt dramatically by a disease, and it was something a lot of farmers hadn't dealt with in the past. It was sudden death syndrome. Well, sudden death syndrome has actually been around for over 40 years, Brian. It was first found in the United States down in Arkansas in 1971. And when we look at that particular disease, you say, wow, it looks bad, and we see it in the middle of the summer, but the infection actually happens in the spring. It's a fusarium disease that is coming in through a root infection. And a lot of times the disease symptoms aren't gonna show up until later on in the season. Now what we'll normally see when we've got some sudden death syndrome into a plant is we've got a couple of things playing out. We've got an early planting season. And the earlier we're out there, the longer that seed is gonna to have to stay in the ground and the more chance there is that that fusarium can get into the root. The other thing with an early season is a lot of times we're cool and we're wet and those are conditions that promote disease as well. Finally, the other thing would be having a susceptible variety. Since we don't have varietal resistance, if you don't have a variety that's pretty tolerant, you're certainly susceptible to having that disease enter your plant. That's the reason why we're talking about sudden death syndrome today, because I realize you don't have your beans in the ground yet. You can't go out and scout for this thing yet. We're talking about it today because we want you to pick the right varieties. And what ends up happening every year we have tight seed supply is you order what you want, something that's good, something that probably has SDS tolerance. And then at the last minute, your seed dealer says, oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't get you what you ordered, but I've got this other number here that's great. Why don't you just plant that? And you kind of forget about oh yeah, I needed to make sure I got something with SDS tolerance. So that's perhaps the most important thing on your farm. You've got to look at defensive traits because once you put that seed in the ground, there's not a lot you can do after that. Well, here's a couple other things to keep in mind. Now, I know some people that had sudden death syndrome two years ago, three, four years ago that have just gone corn ever since. They say, yeah, I've had corn now a few years out there. Now I feel comfortable putting beans back in. Well, guess what? Sudden death syndrome is a disease that can overwinter. It survives. Cold weather doesn't kill it. It also survives in residue. So if you had it out there from a year or even two years ago, it could still be hanging around in some old residue. Or here's the other thing, it can survive in the cysts of soybean cyst nematode. So this is a pretty tough disease and it hangs around. And you know what? Crop rotation really doesn't lessen the impact. If you had sudden death in a certain field before, you're very susceptible to getting it back in that same field again. I don't know if I totally agree with you there, Darren. I think it will lessen the impact some. I just, I mean, it's not going it to completely eliminate it it's, the impact. It's like white mold, yeah. Brian. You can rotate away from from and it'll soybeans help. for a few years and it helps a little. Yeah. 
but you're still gonna have white mold back in that area if you get the right weather conditions again. Yeah, so as we're standing out here in a strip till field, you know, you start thinking about this residue that it can overwinter in. Us, like most farmers, are using reduced tillage methods. There are a lot of benefits to that. One of the drawbacks though is you can have diseases sticking around in your soil a little bit longer. Here's the other thing, if you're reducing your tillage, you have to deal with compaction. You can't just say, well, I'm a no-tiller, that's it, I can't till. Well, guess what? If you've got a compacted layer and your roots can only get so deep, you're much more susceptible to having diseases like sudden death syndrome impact your crop. You need to have good drainage in those fields and you need to have that compaction layer removed so your root system can get down and water can permeate through the soil. Okay, now we're gonna get to something that Darren and I disagree on and that is, I think you need to have the very best seed treatment you possibly can get I don't on your soybean seed, and that's going to help you with sudden death syndrome. Well, you can certainly help with some of the <laughs> fusarium species with a good soybean seed treatment. It's not gonna completely eliminate the possibility, but it will certainly help with some of the other diseases because a lot of times what we see in soybean plants is they aren't just impacted by one disease. There's one disease that kind of weakens them, and then that opens the door for another yep. disease to get in. So I agree with you. We need to start with a good seed treatment, and we need to use foliar fungicides to control the other diseases and promote plant health. But the other foliar fungicides, Brian, they don't do anything for sudden death syndrome because foliar fungicides don't move down in the plant and they would have to move all the way down into the root system to get to where that fusarium infection is coming from. Well, unfortunately, our Weed of the Week doesn't get sudden death syndrome. I wish it did. We're gonna have to figure out another way to control it. We're gonna do that next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. You work to protect your farm's legacy and to keep it going. Introducing the Enlist Weed Control System, an advanced herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate for exceptional control of tough weeds. The next chapter begins. Our Weed of the Week is Devil's Beggar Tick. Darren, what in the world is this thing? Well, we, we don't have it on our farm. Sometimes known as stick tight, sometimes known as Devil's Pitchfork. Uh, it's kind of an interesting <laughs> weed. Well, it's true, we don't have it on our farm brand, but just across the border in southwest Minnesota. For some reason, nature lovers think this is a beautiful plant, so they've spread <laughs> it as a wildflower, so we've introduced it into our area. Yeah, but fortunately, this devil's beggar tick is usually only a problem in the low, wet areas, so obviously, if you do some tiling out there, it's probably gonna fix it or improve your drainage. And the other thing is cultivation, tillage, that will generally take care of it, too. We don't have a big problem with it in fields. Well, you say it's not a big problem, but you look at the seed on devil's beggar tick, and it actually kind of looks like a pitchfork, and it has these spikes on it that can catch on your clothing or catch on animals fur. So it really can get spread around if somebody walks through that patch. Yeah, but the good news is it's an annual weed. It's not all that difficult to control. We just don't have a lot of products that are labeled for it. Well, if you look in corn, you can start out with Triple Flex, Sure Start, Balance Flex, or if you need to burn it down, Verdict does an excellent job. post emerge status will clean up the escapes about 100%. It's really a good product on Devil's Beggar Tick. When you look in soybeans, I really like Bassagran post emerge If I was further south in the U.S., I could use a higher rate of classic than I can get away with here. That does a halfway decent job too. I'd start out with something pre-emerge to try and reduce the pressure of devil's beggar tick. I like sharpen in that burn down situation. Optil does a nice job as well. Otherwise post-emerge cobra would be an option in soybeans too. It would. And in wheat, I like sharpen again as a burn down with some pre-emerge residual. It's going to be nice because you can use a little higher rate than you can in soybeans. And then post-emerge, I like either husky or wide match plus addition broad spec. If you do that tank mix of wide match edition broad spec. It's really got a broad window of control for a, a number of different weeds. Well, once again, our Weed of the Week is Devil's Beggar Tick. It's usually not that big a problem out in fields, but do what you can to control it on your farm. That's it for our Weed of the Week, but stay tuned. Iron Talk is coming up next. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. What are farmers doing to feed the planet? They're using Quadtrek technology, soil management, and planting systems from Case IH to foster a better growing environment that maximizes yield potential. Visit CaseIH.com to be ready. Most non-farmers don't realize that trucking is a big part of the job on the farm. With a tip on keeping those trucks on the road, here's today's Iron Talk. My wife asked me the other day when the off-season was. Well, 
In agriculture, it seems like there's always something going on. When you aren't in the field, you're either trucking or working on equipment. In order to keep those trucks on the road, you need to keep up with licensing and DOT requirements for your state. The Department of Transportation wants annual inspections done on trucks to make sure they're safe for operation on U.S. highways. If your inspections are due in the middle of the growing season, it's a real pain to have to stop what you're doing and get the truck in for inspection. Certainly, maintenance is a 12 months of the year job. But we always schedule our inspections for a time of the year when we can afford our trucks to be off the road for a day. If you haven't had your inspections done yet, right now could be the best time to get them out of the way. Once you set up your annual inspections to be done at an ideal time of the year for your operation, they'll stay that way for the life of the truck. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. Don't miss this year's free Ag PhD Winter Workshops. At Ag PhD, we're all about helping you raise better crops and earn more money on your farm. We'll talk about drought proofing your crop, weed and rootworm resistance, how to improve your fertility program, and on farm trials and field tests. We'll also tell you the good and bad about the new products and technologies on the market and give you our recommendations for pest control and a host of different crops. You'll get some insights on new farm regulations and tax laws going forward. And as always, you'll receive a free agronomy manual. Learn more and sign up today at agphd.com. Speed, strength, and efficiency make Capello corn heads a head above the rest. Built with polymer components that exceed industry standards, Capello corn heads continue to push the boundaries for maximizing grain retention while using less energy. Visit CapelloUSA.com and learn more about Capello's state-of-the-art chopping technology that cuts cleaner, allowing your horsepower to remain where it belongs, with your combine, so you can harvest faster in all weather conditions. Add to that an amazing folding feature and it's clear to see why Capello is a head above the rest. can't fill a barrel any fuller than its lowest stave. And your crops can't do any better than the nutrient that's in shortest supply. Your yield potential is only as good as the weakest nutrient in your fertilizer program. Give your crops more than just NPK. Prescription apply all the micronutrients your crop needs. Each one customized for your crop's potential. MicroLink, linking yield to potential. For years, FarmLogic has been the easiest and most convenient way to keep up with your farming operations. Well, it just got better. Introducing FarmPad for your phone. You always have your phone with you, so entering records as they happen is as easy as a touch of a button. Chemical database, GPS, service records, and more. When you do it on the farm, save it on your phone and it's backed up forever. Call or visit FarmLogic.com for a free trial and find out why FarmLogic is the best decision tool for the farm. Micronutrients are not optional for plants, they are essential. TJ Micromix is a profit-proven management tool that ensures the availability of essential secondary and micronutrients. Formulated as a dry granule or liquid, TJ Micromix is plant available, easy to mix and apply. The synergistic fertilizer mix delivers consistent yield response on a variety of crops by complementing an NPK fertilizer program. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Call TJ Technologies or your fertilizer dealer and get your TJ Micromix today. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. The all new S Cube Commercial Tender is the only tender on the market with poly tanks, giving you the capability to haul seed, fertilizer, water, or liquid fertilizer. Each cube can hold 300 units of seed, 2,000 gallons of liquid, or 300 cubic feet of fertilizer. Options include full functioning wireless remote, stainless steel conveyors, and self contained hydraulics. Get yours today at Norwood Sales. Well, that's all the time we have for this week's show, but be sure to tune in again next time for another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and much more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. Plants actually tell farmers what nutrients they need. They don't do it verbally, but farmers get the information through plant tissue analysis. It's another way farmers practice responsible nutrient management. To learn more, visit rnmf.org.